That's Global Reality Show at gmail.com. Uh, we're going to continue reading here from uh, from the Lost Book of Enki. Trying to find where I left off. I just had it. How did? How could this fucking page change when I haven't even been on the page? I had it set right to where we were at. Here it is. All right, now I got to back to where I just scrolled up a little bit. Now this is the account of the judging of Alalu and of the happenings thereafter on Earth and on Lamu. In his reed hut, Anu was hurting. In the reed hut to him, Inki applied healing. In his reed hut, Alalu was sitting. Spittle he spat from his mouth. So he's in there like, you know, spitting shit everywhere. In his innards, the malehood of Anu was like a burden. Ugh, that sounds gross. In his innards, the malehood of Anu was like a burden. He had the malehood of Anu inside of him. With Anu's semen, were his innards impregnated like a female in travail, his belly grew. This a dude got impregnated, got pregnant like Arnold Schwarzenegger from Anu, like the god of the Anunnaki's. Oh, God, I'm sorry, dude. I feel for you. I mean, maybe you should, you know, keep the back door closed more often. I don't know. Ugh. This is some sick stuff in here. On the third day, Anu's pain subsided. His pride was greatly hurting. To Nibiru, I wish to return. Yeah, get me out of here with these ass fuckers, please. To his two sons did Anu say, beforehand upon Alalu, there must be a judgment, a sentence, the crime befitting must be imposed. By the laws of Nibiru, seven judges were required, the highest rank of them to preside. To preside. In the square of Aridu, the heroes, heroes were assembled, the trial of Alalu to, uh, they were observing. For the seven who judged, seven seats were provided. And they provided the tallest seat of all to Anu. Yeah, because he's a fucking giant, right? To his right was seated Inki. On his left, on the left of Anu, was seated Enlil. On Inki's right, Anzu and Nungal were seated. Abgal and Aligar, to the left of Enlil, sat. Before these seven who judge Alalu was brought, his hands and feet were united. Enlil was first to speak. In fairness, a wrestling match was held. Alalu, the kingship to Anu, was forfeited. What say you, Alalu? Inki asked him. In fairness, the wrestling match was held. The kingship I forfeited, Alalu said. Having been vanished, Alalu, an indomitable crime performed. He bit the malehood, the cock of Anu, and swallowed it. I'm not making this up. It literally says this. So he did a Mike Tyson on him, only he didn't go for the ear. He went right to the cack. And bit the fucker off and swallowed it. <coughs> you know, you heard that about, like, what was it, you know, the Isis, Osiris, Horus thing, you know? Like, set, cut off the penis of Horus or something like that and fed it to this fish. I mean, what was up with these guys? Oh, well, make sure that fucker never comes back. Cut his cock off. Feed it to a fish. Jesus. Thus, in Lil, did in Lil, uh, uh, Enlil made an accusation of the crime. Death is the punishment, Enlil said. Uh, what do you say, Alalu? Enki, his father by marriage, asked. There was silence. Alalu did not answer the question. We all witnessed the crime. Aligar was saying judgment must be in accordance. If words you wish to utter speak before the judging, Enki to Alalu said. In the silence, Alalu slowly began to speak. On Nibiru, I was king. By right of secession, I was reigning. Anu was my cupbearer. The princes, he aroused. So he turned on the males, the princes. Mm. To a wrestling match, he challenged me. 
For nine counted orbits, I was king on Nibiru. To my seed, kingship belonged. On my, thr- on my throne sat Anu himself. To escape death, I made a dangerous journey to the distant earth. For the salvation of Nibiru, I, Alalu, discovered the alien planet. Returned to Nibiru, I was promised, in fairness, the throne to regain. Then to earth came Ea, the one by compromise, the next to reign Nibiru, he was designated. Then came Enlil, the secession from Anu to himself, he claimed. Then Anu came, and he tricked Ea a lot, and Enki, the lord of the earth, he was proclaimed. Of earth, not Nibiru. To be the master, saying, you know, this is your domain. That's why Ea, Earth, is called Earth. It's the realm of Ea. That's what it means. Nobody ever thinks of where that term comes from or why we call the Earth, Earth. It's the realm of Ea. The first two letters of Earth are Ea, Ea. Hello? I don't, if that's not enough to bitch slap you out of your comatose state, I don't know what is. And just people go through their, their everyday lives never even knowing that fact or even, you know, questioning it. But it's a fact. Of earth, not Dabiru, to be the master. Then to Enlil, the command of earth was granted. Enki was designated, was delegated to the distant Abzu. My heart of all that was aching, my chest from shame and anger was bursting. Then I knew placed his foot upon my chest. And started, it began to tread upon my aching heart. In the silence, I knew spoke up. By royal seed and law, by fair wrestling, did I gain the throne. My malehood you bit off and swallowed. My offspring line to discontinue. And Lil spoke up. To the crime the accused admitted, let the judgment come. Let the punishment be death. Death, said Alagar. Death, said Abgal. Death, said Nungal. Death to Alalu by itself will be coming. What he had swallowed in his innards, death will bring. Inki said, let Alalu rest rest of his days on earth be imprisoned. Anzu was saying that their words Anu was contemplated. Anger and pity engulfed both of them. To die in exile. Let this be his judgment, Anu was saying. So, in other words, banish him to Earth. And that would tie into the whole thing we were talking about earlier. They they banished Alalu to Earth and then created the etherical barrier, barrier, the radiation radiation belts around him here. Uh, At least that's how I understand it. Very interesting. We'll see if this this indeed uh, tells us that. That's what I understand, though. In amazement, the judges at each other glanced. What Anu was saying that they wondered, neither on earth nor on Nibiru shall the exiling be, Anu was saying. On the way, there is the Lamu planet. With waters and an atmosphere, it is endowed. Enki, as Ea, thereon made a pause uh, of it as a way station, I have been thinking. That's uh, supposedly supposed to be Mars, I believe. The way station was Mars, from what I understand. Its net force is less than that of Earth forceful, an advantage and wisdom to be considered. In the celestial chariot, Alalu shall be taken. On my departing from Earth with me, he shall make the journey. Around the planet Lamu, we shall make the orbit. To Alalu, a sky chamber we shall provide. To the planet Lamu, in it he will be descended. Alone on a strange planet in exile, he shall be. His days to his last himself shall count. Now, this, uh, what did he refer to it as? The sky chamber? Could that possibly be what, you know, this guy found on Mars? Could that be what the face on Mars is? Highly interesting that, you know, they would banish him there, the way station. We know that they refer to the Mars as the way station. Very interesting that we have Sidonia on Mars, which is what ancient Mesopotamia, what is now Iraq, used to be called. Iraq, Sidonia, Mesopotamia, it's located on the 33rd degree parallel on Earth. 
Cydonia on Mars is also located on the 33rd degree parallel, and that's where these pyramids on Mars are also located. So it's very likely that that's where that's what the, that was. Thus uh, did Anu utter the words of judgment. In solemnity, the words were intended. By unanimity, unanimity, the uh, it was a unanimous decision. Let's just say that to impose this judgment upon Alalu. In the presence of the heroes, it was announced. Let Nungal be my pilot to Nibiru. There from chariots bearing heroes again to earth to pilot. Let Anzu join for, for this journey. So that he can take charge of the descent to Lamu. Oh, Lamu will be in charge of the, of the descent down to the planet. So did Anu commandments utter. On the morrow departing, on the morning they departed, all, they were ready. All who departed by boats to the chariot were ferried. A place for landings on firm soil you must prepare, Anu to Enlil, was saving. How Lamu, as a way station to utilize the, the plans to utilize uh, this, you should be making. There were fare, farewells, both joy and sorrow. Limping, uh, Anu was limping when he embarked on his chariot. He had his hands, uh, and he uh, with his hands he tied Alalu, and he and then drug him into the chariot, the spacecraft. Then to the heavens, the chariot soared up, and the royal visit had ended. They made an orbit around the moon, and Anu was enchanted by the sight of the moon. Toward the red-hued Lamu, which is again Mars. They say here it's red-hued. There you go. And they uh, circled around it twice. Lower towards the strange planet they came, mountains, sky high, and tears in the surface, tears in the surface, they noticed. Where Ea's chariot had once landed, they saw that it was located by a lakeside. Slowed by Lamu net power in the chariot, the sky chamber, they readied. Anzu, its pilot, then ex unexpected words said to Anu, with a lalu to the firm soil of Lamu, I shall descend. With the sky chamber to the chariot to return, I wish not. So he's saying he wants to stay down there with him. With a lalu on the strange planet, I shall stay. Until he dies, I shall protect him. When he dies of his innards poison, as befits a king, him I shall bury. As for me, I shall have made my name. Anzu, they will say, against all odds, to a king in exile, a companion he was. He saw things by others unseen. On a strange planet, he faced unknown things. Anzu, they will to the end of time, shall say, has fallen like a hero. There were tears in the eyes of Alalu. There was amazement in the heart of Anu. Your wish shall be honored, to Anzu Anu said, Hereby let a promise by me to you be made. By my raised hand to you I this swear. On the next journey a chariot by Lamu shall circuit and orbit. Its skyship to you shall descend. If alive it shall find you, the master of Lamu, you shall be proclaimed. So he's making him the, the, the king of Mars here. When a way station on Lamu's shell has been established, its commander you shall be. Anzu bowed his head. So be it, to Anu, he said. Into the sky chamber, Alalu and Anzu were ushered. With eagle's helmets and fish's suits, they were provided. Meaning suits they could fly in space in and suits they could go underwater in. With food and tools, they were supplied. From the circling chariot, the sky ship left and departed. Its descent was what, what they watched its descent from the ground. Then from view, it disappeared, and the chariot to Nibiru continued. Yeah, that's okay. This thing just scrolls down on me sometimes. Here it is. For nine years was Alu the king on Nibiru. For eight years, Iridu, com he commanded in the ninth shar, or year, to die in exile on Lamu was his fate. 
Now, this is the account of the return of a new to Nibiru. So this is a a new segment we're starting here, a new a new a new part, the account of Anu's return to Nibiru. And how Alalu on Lamu was buried, how in Lil on Earth the landing place built. On Nibiru, for Anu, there was a joyous welcome. Anu gave his account to the council and the princes of what had happened. Neither pity nor vengeance from them all he sought. To discuss the tasks ahead of them, he instructed them all. And uh, he outlined a great vision that he had, a great, he assembled a great vision to, to let the council know about. Way, he wanted to establish way stations from Nibiru to Earth and have all of the sun's family in one kingdom. The first Anlamu to be fashioned, the moon for the plans he also considered, and the other planets or their circling host stations to set up. So he wanted to set up stations on moons on other planets as well. And have a constant caravan of ships just going back and forth between every planet. Sounds smart to me. We will bring the earth, the gold from Earth without any interruptions to Nibiru. Um, and uh, per perhaps we will, we will find gold elsewhere. So they're saying, oh, we're going to bring all the gold from Earth, and maybe we'll find it on some of these other planets where we have way stations set up as well. The counselors, the princes, the servants, all considered a news plans. The salvation of Nibiru they saw in uh, the promise of his plans. Savants and commanders, knowledge of the celestial gods perf uh, perfected. They added a new kind of rocket ship, so a new technology to their chariots and skyships. So their technology apparently has, has already evolved at the point of in, in this point of the uh, of the telling of the story. Heroes were selected for the tasks. I'm, I'm guessing heroes. They keep saying heroes. I'm guessing those are like you know people of extraordinary strength. And for the task, there was much to learn. The plans to were beamed over, I guess, you know, sent by a laser, laser fax machine, la laser email to Enlil and Enki, and they were told to hurry their preparations on Earth. On Earth, there was much discussion of what had happened and what there is to, to, to be done. Enki Aligar, to be of Aridu, the overseer, made his own steps to the Abzu he directed. Where to obtain gold from the Earth's bowels, he then determined. What heroes to the task are needed, he calculated. What tools will be required? An Earth splitter with cleverness, Inky designed. An earth split or something that would open up the earth. There within the earth to make a gash in its in and reach its innards by way of tunnels. Could this be where these ancient underground tunnels that have been found under the earth, found in places like Dallas when they first built the uh, the city the uh, city sewer system here? They found tunnels that were older than there had been people here, laser etched tunnels under the under the city of Dallas. Found these little green creatures in there, yeah. That which crunches and that which crushes was the name of the machine. Of other matters, they, uh, Nibiru savants, he had to contemplate. So the, of matters in health and well-being of heroes, he needed to listen. To the heroes, Earth's quick circuits were upsetting. Yeah, they were, they were not happy about the quick orbit because, you know, they're getting older fast. So they're trying to mine this gold, and they're, 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 they're getting older much quicker than they would on their planet, so they can't get the job done. And that's what led to, the, of course, the creation of mankind as a slave race. Earth's quick day and night cycles were causing dizziness to the heroes. The atmosphere, though good, was lacking in some things and too abundant in other things. Of the sameness of the food, the heroes were complaining. They, like, they oh, we eat the same thing all the time. Oh, he eats fucking chicken. In Lil, the commander was afflicted from the heat of the sun on earth for coolness and shade he was longing. 
While in the Abzu, Enki was making preparations. Enlil in his skyship was surveying the extent of Eden, of the Eden, E-D-I-N. That's the place where they were setting up Eden, E-D-I-N, what later became what we know in biblical terms is Eden, see? Of mountains and rivers he took account, of valleys and plains he measured. He wanted to establish in Eden a landing place for the rocket ships. So the rocket ships that land Earth landed in a place called Eden. Give me a fucking break sandwich. God damn. Enlil, by the heat of the sun, was afflicted and was searching more for a coolness and a place of shade. To the snow-covered mountains of the Eden's north side, he took a liking. The tallest trees he ever saw grew there in a cedar forest. There above a mountain valley with power beams, he flattened the surface. Is that what is that what the tops of the mountains in uh, Brazil, you know, where the Nazca lines are at? Where the top, whole tops of the mountains are just sheared off as if by a laser? Is that what in is that what he did? Flattening the surface of these this mountain valley very well could be. Great stones from the hillside the heroes quarried and cut to size. To uphold the platform with skyships they carried and placed them there with satisfaction. Uh, he was Enlil was satisfied with the handiwork. A work beyond belief, indeed it was, a structure of everlasting. An abode for himself on the crest of a mountain was his desire. Of the tall trees in the cedar forest, long beams were prepared. Of them, the construction of an abode for himself, he decreed. The abode of the North Crest, he named it. On Nibiru, a new celestial chariot was soaring off for preparation. New kinds of rocket ships, sky ships, and that which Inki had designed was transporting people. A fresh group of 50 from Nibiru was taking. Chosen females were among them. By Ninma, exalted lady, were they commanded. In succor and healing, they were trained. Ninma, exalted lady, a daughter of Anu she was, a half-sister, not a full sister of Enki, and Enlil she was. She was greatly learned in the treating of ailments. She excelled in that. To the complaints from earth, she gave much attention, a healing she prepared. The course of prior chariots on tablets of destinies were recorded. And Nungal did follow its pilots. <coughs> Unharmed, it reached the celestial god Lamu. It circled the planet slowly to its surface descended. A faint beaming group of heroes followed. Ninma was going with them. They found Anzu beside a lake shore with signals beaming from his helmet. Anzu himself was without motion, prostrate. He lay dead. Ninma touched his face. To his heart, she gave attention. From her pouch, she took out the pulsar. Upon Anzu's heart pulsing, she directed. From her pouch, she took out the emitter, its crystals, life-giving emissions on his body, she directed. Sixty times did Ninma direct the pulsar. Sixty times did the emitter. So, this is some sort of crystal that puts out a frequency, and, and, and I guess after 60 pulses of the frequency, it brings an organic life form back to life. These guys have the, the technology to bring people back to life. Well, no wonder they don't want us to get our hands on this alien technology. There you go. I mean, because, boy, it would suck if we were able to just go over to, walk, uh, to flash a crystal in front of somebody's heart 60 times to make them come back to life, isn't it? That would just suck for this planet. Man. On the 60th time, Anzu opened his eyes. And he began to talk. Gently upon his face, Nimma poured the water of life and wetted his lips with it. Gentle into his mouth, she placed the food of life. Then the miracle happened. Anzu rose from the dead. They inquired to him about Alalu. Anzu told them of Alalu's death. He led them to a great rock, protruding heavenward from the plain. 
There, he told them what happened. Alalu, soon after the landing, began to scream from unremitting pain. From his mouth, his innards he was spitting. In agony, he peered over the wall. He's puking his guts out, literally. Thus, Anzu was saying to them, he led them to a great rock, like a mountain from the plain, heavenward uprising. In the great rock, a cave I found, a Lalu's corpse therein I hid. Its entrance with stones I covered. So uh, Anzu was saying to them that they followed the rock and they removed the stones and entered the cave. Inside, they found what remained of a Lalu. He who once on Nibiru was a king was a pile of bones in a cave now. For the first time in our annals, a king not on Nibiru has died. Not on Nibiru was he buried. So, said Nimma, let him in peace for eternity rest. They then again covered the cave's entrance with stone. The image of Alalu upon the great rock mountain with beams they carved. So, somewhere on Mars, there are probably still evidence of that rock carving done with lasers. Now, some of the rock carvings we've seen on Earth appear to be done with lasers. Stuff we've seen in Egypt, stuff we've seen in South America, all over the place, Samir. So there again, you know, whoever these people are, they had that technology. They showed him wearing an eagle's helmet. Oh, I see what they're saying. On Oh, now I get it. Okay. So on top of the great mountain. Oh, my God. That, this is on top of the, the, the face. The face on Mars is Alalu's face. That's why it's on the 33rd degree parallel in Cydonia, where it just happens to be where Enki set up the landing for Eden. Where was that? The 33rd degree parallel on Earth in Mesopotamia, formerly known as Cydonia, Iraq, who we've bombed and blown the shit out of and taken all their antiquities because they can't allow this info to get out to everybody. And he had a helmet on. And the guy on the face on Mars has what? A helmet. I mean, it, it, it's unbelievable. That's exactly what it was. It was a helmet. And they're saying right here, that they laser etched into this rock on this mountain an image of Alalu wearing a helmet with his face uncovered. My goodness. Let the image of Alalu forever gaze up towards Nibiru, toward Earth whose gold he discovered. That explains the face on Mars and why they wanted to cover that up for years. There you go. So Ninma, exalted lady, in the name of her father, I knew, did declare, as for you, Anzu, to you, Anu, the king of his promise, he shall be keeping. Twenty heroes with you here shall remain. The way station's building to begin. Rocket ships from Earth, the golden oars, shall here deliver. Celestial chariot, chariots from here, the gold to Nibiru, shall then transport. Hundreds of heroes shall make their abode on Lamu, on Mars. You, Anzu, shall be their commander. Thus in, did the great lady, in the name of her father, Anu, to Anzu say, My life I owe to you, great lady. My gratitude to, to Anu shall not have any limits. From the planet Lamu, the chariot departed toward Earth and continued on its journey. So that's the end of, uh, I guess, the fourth tablet. The next chapter is the synopsis of the fifth tablet. And uh, we'll pick up on that next time on the broadcast. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Very, very interesting stuff there tonight. The, the whole thing about uh, the, the, the I, I didn't realize that, that the explanation for the face on Mars was, was in the Sumerian tablets. I never realized that. That's insane. Learn something new every day, or you should, right? Let's get into it now. Synopsis of the fifth tablet. 
Ninma arrives on Earth with a group of female nurses. She delivers, she delivers seeds to grow elixir-providing plants. What, marijuana, psilocybin, peyote, <laughs> hemp? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's probably what it was. She brings in little news of their out-of-wedlock son, Inerta. And the Abzu Inki establishes an abode in mining sites. And the Eden in Lil builds space and other facilities. And he's building a spaceport. Nibirians on Earth, who on Earth are called the Anunnaki or the Anunnaki, number 600. So there were 600 originally brought down to Earth. I did not know that. 300 Igigi. Igigi operate the facilities on Lamu, or Mars. Exiled for date-raping Sud, and Lil learns of the hidden weapons. Date-raping Sud? Really? You really said date-raping in the Sumerian text? Hmm. Date-rape, huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really. Really? Really said date rape in there? I think old Zachariah might have been hitting the uh, cocaina when he wrote that. I don't know. Maybe maybe he misinterpreted. Oh, yes, yes, it says date rape. That's what it says right there, date rape, don't you know? Sumerians were all into date rape, yeah. It's just ridiculous. So exiled for date raping Sud, and Lil learns of the hidden weapons. Sud becomes a little spouse. And then Lil bears a son named Nanar. Ninma joins Enki in the Abzu and bears him daughters. Nenki, Enki's spouse, arrives with their son Mardok. I see they named their son Mardok here. Going back to the conversation we were having with the email from Cherry earlier. Plans form on Earth as Enki and Enlil beget more sons. Beset by hardships, the Gigi launch a coup against Enlil. Ninurta defeats their leader, Anzu, in aerial battles. These are what I interpret to be like the Virmanas that are talked about in uh, Eastern mythology. The Anunnaki, driven to produce gold faster, mutiny. And Lil and Inerta denounce the mut the mutineers. Inki suggests to artificially fashion primitive workers. So here we go. Now we are jumping smack dab into the fifth tablet. From the planet Lamu, the chariot departed towards Earth. The journey continued. Around the moon, they made an orbit and went there to explore a way station. Around the Earth, they made more orbits and uh, slowed down so they could have a splashdown in the water. In the waters beside Iridu, Nungle brought the chariot down to a quay by Enlil constructed. They stepped off. Boats were no longer needed. So there was some sort of platform built of the spaceport there by the water, probably in the Red Sea. Enlil and Enki there. Sister with embraces greeted with Nungle, the pilot they locked arms. The heroes, male and female, by the present heroes were shouts, were greeted with shouts. Everything that was brought on the spaceship was quickly unloaded. Rockets, skyships, and the tools that were designed by Inky and provisions and food of all kinds. Of all that transpired on the Biru. The death, uh, Ninma was told of the death and burying of Alalu uh, by her brothers. She also related to them the story of the way station on, that, on Lamu that was being commanded by Anzu. Enki uttered his approval of that, and Enki's words uh, gave them bewilderment. That is a news decision. His word is unalterable. Ninma to Enlil was saying, for the malady's relief I have brought, Ninma to her brother said, from her pouch, a bag of seeds she brought, seeds to be 
sown in the soil. A host of bushes shall sprout from the seeds, and they will produce a juicy fruit. The juice shall form an elixir, for drinking by the heroes it shall be. Their ailments it will chase away, and it will make their mood happier. In a cool place, the seeds need to be sown. By warmth and water, they need nourishing. So Ninma to her brothers did say, the place that for this is perfect, I will show you, Enlil said. And it's, of course, this is probably going to be the Eden, E-D-I-N. It is where the landing place was fashioned, where an abode of cedar wood I have made. In Enlil's skyship, the two of them, Enlil and Ninma, soared towards the sky. To the landing place in the snow-covered mountains by the cedar forest, brother and sister went. On the great stone platform, the skyship landed. To Enlil's abode, they went. Once inside, Enlil embraced her. With fervor, he kissed Ninma. Oh, my sister, my beloved. Enlil to her whispered. By her loins, he grabbed her. Uh-oh. Keep it in the family. This is where the, this is where the interbreeding started. Into her womb, his semen he did not pour. I, I got I to stop right there. I, I, I got to say this before I can go any further. That is the greatest thing I've ever been able to say on radio in my almost four years now of doing this show. I got to say it one more time. You ready for this? Greatest thing I've ever been able to say on the show. Here it is. Into her womb. His semen he did not pour. He poured, he did not pour her semen. Because she waited for mine. Because she wanted to suck Satan's cock. <laughs> yes. Into her womb, his semen he did not pour. Oh, that's just beautiful. Poetry. So basically, he had sex with his sister, but he didn't, he didn't come inside of her. He pulled out. Well, good job. I can't believe Sumerian text w- 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 went as far as to tell us about pulling out. You know, there you go. there's a message in the Sumerian text. Yeah, yeah, there is a message in the Sumerian text, you dumb fucks. Pull out. Teach that to Britney Spears and her sister. My God, it's been there for thousands of years. So he fucked his sister, but he pulled out, so it's all good. Uh, it's basically what they're telling us. So the, so the, the moral of the story is, it's okay to have sex with your sister as long as you pull out. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sumerian text. Thank you, Anunnaki. Thank you for clearing that up for us. We were all confused. Thank you. <laughs> of our son, Ninurta, I will bring you word, Ninma said to him softly. He, for he is a young prince. He is ready for adventure, and he is ready to join you on earth. He is prepared. If you stay here on earth, let us, Ninurta, bring over our son, Enlil, to her said. To the landing place, heroes were arriving. Rocket ships and sky ships were carried to the platform. From the pouch of Ninma, the seeds were obtained. In the valley soils, they were sown. A fruit from Nibiru was to be grown here on earth. In the sky ship, Enlil and Ninma returned to Eridu. On the way, Enlil showed her the landscape and showed her the extent of the Eden. From the skies, Enlil to her explained the plans. I have designed an everlasting plan, he was saying to her. That for which all time construction shall determine I have laid out. That means like he's talking about like all time construction. He's talking about, see, that's a very interesting thing. That's something I'm, I, I, I've, I've come across in my research and wondered about but never been a, a, able to really prove. He says, that for which all time construction shall determine, I have laid out. And what I mean, I I take that to believe for my research is this. Now, I could be be off the mark on this, but I'm going to tell you, I've come across that, but, but, but seeing that statement there is very telling. It seems that when you see the way that cities are laid out and the grids are laid out, and you look at, you can even look at official mainstream documentation on, the civilization of Sumeria, the first civilization. And they got it right, even when you go look at, like, the Library of Congress, you know, real milk toast, <laughs> mainstream information, uh, historical information regarding Sumeria. 
you you find that it talks about how they had societal structure that we follow to this day set up, one shot, one try, where'd they get that knowledge from? You know, they had sewage systems, they had, you know, credit systems, they had a very sophisticated society that's not much different from ours today. And that's what he's saying here. And so when you see new cities built and you see the way these grids are built and the way they they put them on certain parallels and things, it almost gives you the idea that the reason why we see, you know, the Statue of Liberty, Queen Semiramis, going back to this time, or we see, you know, Washington, Washington D.C. built the way it is and these obelisks everywhere, it's almost as if it's in the elite's playbook that from this ancient creed from the Anunnaki that they have to continue to build it, it, th- throughout time in the way that Enlil had uh, had said that they, they had to build. Away from Eridu, where dry lands begin, I shall make my quarters. Laarsa will be its name, a place for directing it shall become. On the banks of the Burunau River of the deep waters it will be located. A twin there of a city shall in a future arise. Lagash, I shall name it. Between the two, on the two plans, a line I have drawn. Six leagues thereafter, a healing city shall come into being. A city of your own, it shall be, Shurabach. The haven city, I shall name it. On the center line, it shall be located. To the fourth city, it shall be leading. Nibiru, key. Earth's crossing place, I will name it. A bond, heaven. Earth in it, I shall establish. The tablets of destiny it shall house. All missions it will control. The tablets of destiny. This could be what they've been looking for. So the tablets of destiny have been, see, I didn't know that, or or have been stored on earth. And that's what all this search for the the, uh, Sumerian cylinder seals and clay tablets has been about. (coughs) They're looking for the tablet of destiny with, with all these, basically these missions for what to do on earth and in other places. They very well probably have found them by this point. With Iridu, five cities there shall be counted. To eternity they shall exist. On a crystal tablet, Enlil to Ninma was showing this master plan. On the tablet, she saw more markings and inquired of them to Enlil. Beyond the five cities, I shall place a chariot, and I shall from henceforth build this chariot, a spaceship. From Nibiru to Earth, directly to Arai, no, not a, not a spaceship, a chariot place. This is talking about a stargate. Because he's not saying he's going to build a spaceship a, 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 itself, a chariot or a skyship like they refer to it. It says a chariot place, meaning a place that is it itself a chariot to carry you from one place to another. This is a stargate. Let me read it again. That's exactly what this is. Uh, watch my film, the Sumerian Stargate uh, Norway Spiral film, Reality of Illusion Series Part 2. It's up on YouTube. It's also at my website, thegoverality.com, uh, because that's where I drew all that from. Because I had remembered, I had read about this somewhere. This is the first time I've seen it again in a very long time. Because I think I had seen, you know, probably clips from this book posted on a website and stuff long ago, but never come across it again. And that's where I got that from was 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 was, was in that movie because there are um, in that film I've got a picture of a Sumerian it's like a big rock uh, carving thing and the guy's got a watch on it just appears that he's in a fucking uh, Stargate so that's exactly what this is so this, he's talking about the Anunnaki built a Stargate beyond the five cities so if we if we determine exactly where these five cities are and we know they're in the Middle East we'd be able to determine where that stargate is now, wouldn't we? Beyond the five cities, a chariot place I shall henceforth build. From Nibiru to Earth, directly arrive. So meaning you can derive directly from Earth by just walking through this chariot place. There again, it's a portal. Enlil was responding to her. Why by Anu's plans for Lamu, Enlil was be- bewildered. Dinma then understood. My brother, magnificent is your plan for the five cities. The creation of Shurabak, a city for healing, is my abode for my own to be, is a matter for which I am grateful. 
Beyond that plan, do not transgress your father. Do not offend your brother. You are as wise as you are beautiful, Enlil said to her. In the Abzu, Enki plan, it was also conceiving plans on where to build his house. For where would he prepare a hero's dwelling? Where in the bowels of the earth to enter? So Enki wanted to build his where? Underground in the, battle, in the bowels of the earth. Where the first underground, this is why people have found these, you know, ancient underground tunnels under the earth. They were built there thousands of years ago. In his skyship, the extent of the Abzu was measured and he did survey its districts very carefully. A distant land, the Abzu was, beyond the waters from the Eden, it was away. A rich land it was, bursting with riches, perfect in fullness. Mighty rivers rushed across the region. Great waters there rapidly flowed. An abode by the following waters, Inki himself established. To the midst of the Abzu, to a place of pure waters, Inki betook himself. In that land, the place of deepness, Enki determined for the heroes into the earth for the bowels to descend. The earth sputter, Enki there established, there within the earth to make a gash. So he cut open the earth to make a way to go, um, to make tunnels under the earth. By way of tunnels, they reached earth's innards, and they hoped to uncover its golden veins, meaning they hoped to dig into the earth and pull the gold out. Nearby that which crunches and that which crushes he in place, which we determined that was you know, some big mover, some big thing that machine that did the work of mining the gold. The gold bearing ores to crunch and crush by and to be carried by the sky ships to the landing place in the Cedar Mountains to be brought. Therefore, by rocket ships to the way station on Lamu to be transported. So they transported them from Earth to the way station on Mars and then to the Nibiru. Um, Makes total sense. On Earth, more heroes were arriving. Some to the Eden they were assigned, and some to the Abzu uh, they were given tasks. Larasa and Lagash by Enkel were constructed, and Sir Barak for Ninma he did establish. Within her, therein, a host of female healers were dwelling. In Nibiru, Ki, in Lil, a bond heaven Earth was assembling. From there, all missions to command. So they were going to command all their new missions for their new you know, revitalizing and re-strengthening of Nibiru from Earth. That was how they were launching their operations. Between Iridu and the Abzu, Enki was journeying back and forth for supervising. On Mars, construction was progressing, and a way station for the heroes was starting to be constructed. A shar, two shars, which is a period of time, were lasted uh, for the preparation, so it took the preparations, took them a few years, then Anu gave the word, and now you'll see where this came from. Again, much older than Christianity, Anu gave the word. We know what the word is. On earth, the seventh day it was, a day of resting. At the very beginning was decreed by Enki on the seventh day. So the idea of the seventh day being day of rest goes back to the time of Enki. Not, hey, wait, 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 wait before the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. God damn, get over it. At every place the heroes were assembled, a message from Anu and from Dibiru they beamed overhead. In the Eden they were assembled. Enlil was there in command. And with him, Ninma, her host of young, young ones by her side, was assembled. So they're assembled in, in, in Eden, assembled there in... Uh, and getting ready for something obviously to happen next. Let's see how much we have left here. All right. Uh, it says it uh, in the Abzu, where the heroes assembled under the gaze of Inki, they stood. With Inki was his vizier. Izimud, Nungal the pilot, was there too. On Lamu, the heroes were assembled. With their proud commander, Anzu, they stood. 600 were on Earth, 300 on, on Mars were gathered. In all, there were 900. The words of Anu the king they all heard. 
Heroes of Nibiru, you are the saviors. The fate of all is in your hands. Your success shall for eternity be recorded by glorious names you shall be called. Those who on who are on earth shall be forever known as the Anunnaki. Those who from heaven to earth came. So that, that the, what we refer to as heaven We now know to be Nibiru. Those who are on Lamu, Mars, Igigi it shall be named. Those who observe and see shall they be. So saying that basically they've been, you know, observing and watching the activities from their way station on Mars all of this time. Unbeknownst to us, that could have been that structure that guy found on Google Earth or uh, Mars Google Images type thing recently. All that is required is ready. Let the gold start coming. Let Nibiru be saved. So the next part is now this is the account of Enlil and Enki and Ninma. So this starts getting getting into the sort of the, you know, twisted love triangle stuff here. But very interesting, again, the history of these people who allegedly came down. Again, you know, <coughs> I'm not saying I 100% agree with all this or think it's all true or anything else. <clears throat> but a lot of this stuff is just hard to deny. It's hard to ignore. And I see a clear pattern that has been set before us by these gatekeepers of, of, of the phony truth movement. And anytime I see somebody constantly saying, don't look at this, don't look at that, don't look at this information over here, it's always made me want to look at it more. Don't look at the Black Pope stuff. Don't look at the secret right. Just focus on the left wing, all that stuff. You know, it always made me go, well, there must be something to it, you know, if they're telling us not to look at somebody, anybody's it's anyway, don't look at some piece of information that could be helpful to attaining a better idea of the grand scope of the big picture, then it should be looked at. You know, you can decide for yourself what's bullshit and what's not. You don't need somebody telling you that. I mean, I just, I just get sick of that. You have to allow people to, to look at this stuff and determine for what themselves is for true. And again, uh, that's why I've read all this stuff. That's why I read William Bramley. That's why I'm reading this. Because I felt like for the longest time of the show, I was just kind of making broad assumptions about things and dismissing certain things without really giving them a fair shake. And so that's what this is about. And that's why we're reading this. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get something out of it. I know I certainly do. I, 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 I gain a greater knowledge, a greater understanding of the things I already know. You know, a lot of this I've already known, but it's just the clarity of of being able to see a much wider picture of it. So it's, uh, it's, it really is, I think, enjoyable, and I think it is very, very vital in understanding. This is the stuff that we've got to understand before we can understand what, why this whole world system that we're up against is in place. It's all a result of, the, of this stuff. And the gatekeepers have been there to keep you from ever finding that and keep, her from, keep you from ever asking those more crucial questions. But I think now we're in a time where by hook or by crook, the, the, the information, it's all around us all the time. But, if we, you know, the, the, really the choice is up to us. Are we going to choose to open our minds, open our hearts, open our, our consciousness and try to receive the, the healing energy and the information that the creator is trying to channel to us? We have to open ourselves up to this. Our destruction, our savior, it's not going to come on a guy in a white steed or the man in a mythological, you know, craft. It's going to come from inside of us. We are the saviors. We are the ones we've been looking for. It's up to us. That's what these different incarnations of E.I. and Inky were trying to tell us, be it Jesus or, or any of the other ones, Quetzalcoatl, on and on and on, that, that we are them and they are us. And everything that we've been told they are capable of and God is capable of, we are capable of because we are of that. And that's what they don't want us to know. And uh, we just got to keep pushing for it. We have the power, not the people that run the banks and the people that run this criminal death machine. That's what it is, a gigantic mafioso criminal death machine. We are the ones with the power, not them, and that's why everything is designed to keep us restricted from that power and to keep us from knowing it. But knowledge is power, and that's what we have to continue on for. 
Let's get into where we left off last night of the Lost Book of Enki here. The last thing that we read, Heroes of Nibiru, you are the saviors. The fate of all is in your hands. That's where we left off last night. So we're going to pick up here on page 111 tonight, the Lost Book of Enki. Let's just jump right into it. Your success shall for eternity be recorded. By glorious names you shall be called. Those who on earth are shall... <coughs> Excuse me. Those who are on earth shall now be known as the Anunnaki. Those who from heaven to earth came. Those who are on Lamu are Igigi and shall be named. Those who observe and shall see, they shall be. All that is required is ready. Let the gold start coming. Let Nibiru be saved. Now, this is the account of Enki, Enlil, and Nima, Ninma. So this is actually where we left off last night. I just want to back it up a little bit. Their loves and espousals and by their sons, their rivalries. The offspring of Anu were the three leaders, and they were all born by different mothers. Enki was the firstborn son. A concubine of Anu was his mother. Enlil was born by Antu, the spouse of Anu, who was born the legal heir he became. Ninma was born by an, another concubine, a half-sister of the two brothers she was. The firstborn daughter of Anu she was, by her title name Ninma, this was indicated. Greatly beautiful she was, full of wisdom, one quick to learn. Ea, as Enki then was named, see, they, they clarify that for you. Ea was uh, called, uh, or Enki was called Ea back then. And later on, as you're reading this, I talked about this last night, you'll, you'll hear them, them, they'll be calling him Enki, but when they're on Earth, Enlil will address Enki as Ea sometimes. It's like a nickname. You know how sometimes somebody's name will be Frank or John or David, and, and, and some families will just name that kid Bubba. You, you, I mean, I don't know if a lot of you are from, you know, I mean, I mean, that's just a southern thing from where I'm from down here in Redneckville, but uh, <laughs> where I come from, people do that, you know. Hey, Bubba. Hey, hey, Bubba, get over here, Bubba. And they'll, they'll just call him Bubba. It's kind of, that's what it is, you know. So he refers to Enki as Ea. That's kind of like a childhood name. As Enki was then named, uh, by a new to espouse Ninma was chosen. And thereby their offspring would be the legal successor to the throne of Nibiru. Ninma of Enlil, a dashing con a commander, was enamored. Oh, this is going to get into the incest is, is the best. Put your sister to the test stuff, isn't it? Uh, by him she was seduced. Into her womb he poured his seed. Uh-oh. I thought we had another thing where it says something about not pouring the seed into their womb. Uh-oh, he poured it. Uh-oh, he poured the seed in her. Ah! God, I just poured my seed in you, baby. And try saying that to try saying that to your woman next time you're doing your business. Probably wind up with a snipped penis. A son from a little seed she born, Inerta, the two have named him. I knew was angered by the deed, the deed, the dirty deed. Yeah, baby. As punishment, he forbade Ninma to ever be the spouse of Enlil and made her be uh, Ea's wife. Oh, that's fucked up. So, <laughs> Ea, his bride to be by a news decree, abandoned a princess named Damkina, he instead espoused. Okay. A son in heir to them was born. Marduk, they named him. One in a pure pace, born it, it meant. As for Enlil, a son not by a spousal he had, a spouse by his side he did not have. It was on earth, not Nibiru, that Enlil uh, found a wife. Ah, there you go. Okay. So they're on Nibiru, and they're kind of passing out wives and setting up who's going to be with who to continue the bloodline, but then it says here it was well, it was an on Nibiru that Enlil became espoused, meaning uh, Enlil uh, found and uh, acquired a spouse. He acquired a spouse on Earth, so this must have been the what what the Bible talks about with uh, with the Nephilim and 
mating with the daughters of man and Lil, you know, got down there and did some banging and created mankind and said, oh, we got a slave race. But unfortunately, uh, because these folks who we're talking about here, obviously, if they're talking about the secession of their bloodlines, it's pretty clear these people weren't slaves, right? No, we're not talking about. So how, the, it was the arrogance of these, you know, royal genetic seed bloodline Anunnaki, was their arrogance to believe that they could create a slave race using their own DNA that would want to be or would be okay with their enslavement. It is not in our DNA to be enslaved. That's why it is natural to rebel against your slavery. Spiritual slavery, money slavery, job slavery, whatever it may be, relationship slavery. It is not within our construct to be enslaved. We didn't come from that. That's why we feel the need to break free from it. <coughs> but they'll tell you you're, you're crazy. <coughs> if you don't want to go along with it and be a good slave. <coughs> the account is, is one of rape and exile, a love that brought forgiveness. And of more sons that were only half-brothers. On earth it was summer, to his abode in the, ce in the cedar forest, Enlil retreated. In the cedar forest, Enlil was walking in the cool of the day. In a cool mountain stream, son of, some of Ninma's young ones that were assigned to the landing place were bathing. By the beauty and grace of one, Sud was her name, Enlil was enchanted. To his cedar wood abode, and Lil invited her. Oh, it's getting hot now. Oh, God. Here we go. We're going to get into some hot, hot Sumerian text for you tonight here. Oh, yeah. It's going to get hot. To his cedar wood abode, and Lil invited her. Come partake with me in the elixir of Nibiru's fruit that grew here. To her, he said. Sud entered in Lil's abode, and he gave her a cup of elixir. Oh, what's in that elixir? Sud drank, and Lil drank it too. To her, in Lil, of intercourse, he was speaking. Oh shit! In Lil is a pimp. P I M P. The dude doesn't waste any time. So he rolls up on and sees this chick playing in the water. He ain't there two seconds. He's already inviting her back to the wooden cedar wood abode. He hands her a cup of an elixir, and she doesn't even take more than a couple sips off this, and dude's standing over there with his cock out. Well, what do you think about it, baby? Are we going to have intercourse or what? Jesus Christ, slow down, dude. You know? We get to know each other first before you go right into just, bam, cock is just out. No wonder humans are a bunch of fuck-crazy maniacs. You know? All we do is, uh, 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 uh. Can I fuck it? No. Can I eat it? No. Can I kill it? No. Well, then I'm bored with it. Fuck it. I mean, seriously. <laughs> no wonder we want to fuck everything that moves. We were created by a bunch of horny maniacs. We wonder why there's fucking 500 trillion of us on this planet. My God. The people that created us were fucking... All the time. What do you think we want to fuck all the time? We we look at, oh my God, we might we have we have to have eugenics. We have to kill us. There's so many of us. Well, my God. Well, maybe go talk to your bloodline ancestors about that then, Rockefeller. Fuck. This guy gives her a sip of some some drink, man. She didn't get two drinks down. He's like, oh wow, look. Now listen to this. Listen, listen to what she says. I'm, I'm not kidding you. You can get a copy of this book. I'm not making this up. I'm not trying to be perverted. This is what it says. So he was talking about intercourse, and it says, unwilling was the last. Aye, unwilling was the last. What is this, written by a fucking drunkard and Irishman? Aye. And Lil was speaking of intercourse, but I unwilling was the last. It's a bunch of pirates, pirate aliens. And, 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 and I'm not kidding you. This is what she says. She says, my vagina is too little. It knows not copulation. To Enlil, she was saying. So she said her, 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 
Her vagina is too too tight. It knows not copulation, so she's never been penetrated. And, oh, so he's like, oh, so he's, you know, he's totally, totally, you know, like, want it bad now. He's like, oh, shit, you're a virgin, too? Fuck. Oh, man, I'm good. Damn it. I saw you swimming around over there. I mean, shit, I move fast, but damn. Doing her and Lil was kissing and was speaking. Unwilling still was the loss. My lips are too small. They know not kissing. And Lil laughed and embraced her. <laughs> Suck Satan's cock. Get that deep scaly worm pecker down your gullet, baby. You're gonna like it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, kiss it. Yes. Oh, that's what I like. Oh, and Lil likes that. So you didn't know that in Lil was also Lucifer, did you? <laughs> Suck Satan's cock, baby. <laughs> He's semen poured into her womb. This is dirty. Triple X Sumerian text. No wonder they don't want us reading this stuff. 5,000-year-old porn etched into rocks. Who knew, right? I sure as fuck didn't. That's what I'm saying. You get these letters from people all the time. Can you not cuss on your show? I want to allow my little kids to listen to it. This is a this is an NC-17 show here for that reason. Because I, you know, if I would have been reading this on air on some, you know, FM station or something, you know, or, or somewhere where I couldn't cuss, you know, I mean, that wouldn't have been my fault. I didn't know all this stuff was in there. Literally, I mean, this is talking about my pussy lips are too tight and. And pouring semen into the womb. I mean, I didn't have any idea any of this stuff was in there. You know, so, so, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm sorry. I know I'm sorry there's people out there that want to allow their kids to hear this information, but, you know, sometimes the, the this, I mean, that's what, I don't know. I mean, you gotta let kids be kids, you know. I mean, get them, I understand it's important also. You wanna start teaching these kids at a young age, but I'm just saying, man. Sometimes this stuff gets into dirty territory. It's not necessarily just me, you know, up here ranting and raving and using cuss words all the time. My goodness. I mean, every other page, somebody's pouring womb and uh, semen into somebody's womb or like the other night, biting somebody's cock off and then puking up blood and there's, you know, tight vag and stuff in here. This shit is fucking filthy. But guess what? You know what? You know what's funny about it all? This, this is, is where, where all the teachings, teachings of the Lord came from, from yeah, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, it is. Yeah, that's why they. That's why they're trying to tell you. You know, oh, sex is sin, and then the, the devil don't have sex. That's why they do that. That's why those Christians do that. Oh, you know, oh, it's of the devil. Yeah, because they don't want you to know where we came from. I mean, everybody knew our our, our ancestors were a bunch of you know. Fuck crazy maniacs just going through the galaxy, fucking everything they get their hands on. Look, look down there. They got some life forms. Let's see if we can go down there and fuck them. Take me to your leader. We are here to fuck your women. You know, I mean, there were just, we're just horny guys just flying around in sky chariots going down and going, yes, we're gods. Yes, yes, bow to us. Yeah, yeah, I'm a god. Yes, I am your god. And uh, uh, never do anything uh, that uh, says anything bad about your god. Uh, always make sure that uh, your your God comes first. Uh, don't have sex. Don't do anything like that. No, no, no. Uh, and uh, also, yeah, do you have anything I could fuck, by the way? Thanks. Yes, I am your God, bow to me. Now give me something to fuck. That's pretty much what these guys, sound like these guys went around doing. I mean, it's, all, it's totally out of control. This is just filthy. To Ninma Sud's commander, the immortal, the immoral deed was reported. In Lil, immoral one, for your deed judgment you shall face. So did Ninma to Enlil in anger say. In the presence of fifty Anunnaki, seven who judge were assembled. Seven who judge on Enlil a punishment decreed. Let Enlil from all cities be banished. To a land of no return, let him be exiled. 
in a sky chamber they made in Lil leave the landing place. Abgal was his pilot. To a land of no return, Enlil was taken, never to return. Well, that's why they call it the fucking land of no return, isn't it? But you don't return from it. Idiots. My God. A little editing, please. You guys are etching this out on fucking, you know, clay tablets and shit, and you had time to repeat yourselves? I mean, you had room to repeat yourselves? Wow. In the sky chamber, the two of them journeyed to another land was their direction. There, amidst forbidding mountains at a place of desolation, Abgal, the sky chamber, landed. This, your place of exile, shall be, Abgal to Enlil was saying. Not perchance have I chosen it, to Enlil he was saying. A secret of Enki in it is hidden. In the nearby cave, Enki, seven weapons of terror has hidden. Also, he hid seven nuclear weapons in there. Oh, that was smart. This guy's going around banging your half-sister, getting her pregnant, and, you know, you want to give him nuclear weapons? Again, you know, we have to start coming to to grips with the fact that it could be possible the people that we think are gods were very smart. (laughs) You know, just as dumb and irrational and, 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 and as any of our elite leaders are today, it sounds like, doesn't it? kind of bumbling their way through things. Everything's new. That's why it seems that the spirit world is so much more removed from that reality. Because we're still talking about the physical plane here. But now that we get into the stuff where, you know, these people have the technology to manipulate that as well, it's a totally different thing. From Alalu's celestial chariot, he had them removed. Take the weapons into your possession. With the weapons, you will attain your freedom. So was Abigail to his commander saying, a secret of Enki to Enlil he did reveal. Then Abigail departed from the secret place, and Enki, Enlil rather was alone left there. In the Eden Sud to Ninma, her commander's words were speaking. By Enlil's seed I am pregnant. A child of Enlil in my womb has been conceived. Ninma Sud's words to Enki conveyed, the lord of the earth he was, on earth he was supreme. They summoned Sud before seven who judge. Will you take Enlil as your spouse, they, they asked her. She said yes. The, to espouse Sud Enlil from his exile was returned by that. Enki and Ninma to him gave a pardon. So they pardoned him and allowed him to come to earth. Enlil's official spouse was Sud. It was declared her name title to be Nin Lil, Lady of the Command. She was bestowed. Thereafter to Nin Lil and Enlil, a son was born, Nanar, the Bright One. Nin Lil named him. He was the first of the Anunnaki on Earth to be conceived. One of Nibiru's royal seed on an alien planet was born. It was after that Enki to Ninma was speaking. Come be with me in the Abzu. In the midst of the Abzu, in a place of pure waters, an abode I have established. With a bright metal silver is its name. It is embellished. With a deep blue stone, lapis lazuli, it is adorned. Come, Ninma, be with me. Your adoration of Enlil to be abandoned. So he's saying, okay, okay. He's gonna, now you know. Now you've you know you've banged my brother. You shit out one of his kids. Now you know, make it fair. And let's get some double incest going on over here, and come back to my boat. Let me hit it too, and you know, pour the royal water in you, and we'll just have us a whole little clusterfuck here. No wonder the people that run our planet are sick, incestuous, inbreeding bastards. Sounds like that's what these fuckers were. No wonder our elite interbreed and do all this stuff. My God, this is why. They just, that's why everything in our realm on this earth is is a blueprint that was taken and done somewhere else on another planet and transplanted here. Again, that's the answer to the question of why humans are the only thing on this planet that just doesn't fit, because we were planted here by a bunch of fucking 
inbred, disgusting idiots, it sounds like. No wonder we got a bunch of inbred, disgusting idiots running this planet. Hello? Everybody figure that out now? My goodness. <laughs> I'm glad we figured that out. I'm glad we now know where the source of this comes from. It all makes sense to me now. No wonder these fuckers are like this. Sick. Enlil spoke loving words to her of how he intended, uh, of what he intended for her. He's, he spoke sweet words. You are my, still my beloved, he said to her. He embraced her and kissed her, and she caused his phallus to water. She caused his phallus to just oh, oh shit he starts like oh oh fuck stuff's coming out of it we haven't even done anything yet oh my god Enki his semen into the womb of Nimma poured give me a son give me a son he cried out damn that's fucked up like this dude's like you know pounding away and like like he's rolling dice or something you know give me a son give me a son bet I'll six bet I'll six you know fuck you rolling dice over there dude these people are fucked up. She took the semen into her womb. The semen of Enki impregnated her. Pastor Hage. <coughs> One day of Nibiru was a month of Earth time for her. Two days, three days, four days of Nibiru, like months of Earth they were. Five and six and seven and eight days of month were completed. The ninth count of motherhood was completed. Ninma was in travail. To a child she gave birth, the newborn was a female. On the banks of the river in the Abzu, a daughter to Enki and Ninma was born. Enki, by a daughter, was disappointed. Kiss the young one to him, Ninma said. Kiss the young one. Enki, to his vizier Ismid, said, I desired a son. A son by my half-sister I must have. Again, he kissed Ninma by her loins and grabbed her. His semen into her womb again he poured. God damn, he didn't even wait. She just shits one out. He walks over there and goes, I wanted a son. <laughs> you got to wait a little while, dude. You can't just go sticking it in there right after she popped one out. Again, these are some dumb motherfuckers that created us. <laughs> you gotta wait, dude. Again, she was with child, and again, a daughter to Inky she bore. A son, a son by you I must have. Inky cried out to her again. Ninma he kissed again. Thereupon Ninma against Inky a cursing tittered. Whatever food he ate was poison in his innards. His jaw hurt. His tooth hurt. His ribs were hurting. Izimud the Anunnaki summoned to Ninma for relief, they were pleading. To distance himself from Ninma's vulva, Enki was raised. Uh, he raised his arm and swore. One by one, she and his ailments removed from his curse. Enki was freed. So he, so he started like going after the vag again. And she had to cold blood and put a damn curse on his ass uh, to keep her away from, uh, th from the vag. Make him sick so he wouldn't want it. Damn, dude, that's hardcore. Ninki, lady, lady of the earth, the title was given to the child. By her and her concubines, Enki had five more sons. These were their names. Nergal and Gibal, Ningal and Ningshadiza and Dumuzi was the youngest. To earth, Enlil and Enma, their son, Ninurta summoned. By his spouse, Enlil, did Enlil one more son have. To Nanar, a full brother. Ishkur was his name. Three sons in all did Enlil have. None by concubines were they born. Two clans were thus on earth established. Their rivalries to wars did lead. So what that means is that and this is this this is really a a, a a a a very proper explanation of something I've had a question about for a very long time here. Um, Inky ended up having all these sons, but it says in this last statement here that the two two clans were thus on earth established, and their rivalries led to wars. So they established two clans on earth that were both based on 
in Lil and Enki's family. This was the same family. They created one tribe over here. Another tribe over here didn't tell them they were family and then pitted each other's, pitted them against each other, and this led to wars. So this, again, this is proof that they've been pitting us against each other, man against man, family against family, since time immemorial. And why would they do this? They had to do this to set up a culture of war, a culture that established itself on that so that they could control it. That's unbelievable to me. So, and that, 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 that makes so much more sense. This is why the elite have tried to wipe out these certain bloodlines in the Middle East, the Arabic bloodline in Iraq and Sumer because supposedly there are people there that still have the this royal blood in their in their systems and the elite for some reason see it as a threat to them because if the some of these people that are descendants of these original Anunnaki of the the Semitic Arabic bloodlines <coughs> they would be a challenge to the power structure that's why this genocide in Iraq and the Middle East, folks, that's the real reason behind it. There's something there in those bloodlines that the, that the elite's afraid of. They see it as a threat to their power. It's unbelievable stuff. Well, this, this starts next with the account of the mutiny of, a, of Agigi. And I think Agigi, I can't remember what planet that, that said that was. It's one of the planets, Jupiter or Mars or something, but... Uh, We'll pick up on that next time. We're going to leave it off there here for tonight. I want to thank everybody for tuning into the show and being here with us.